Hello guys, Fred here from Pro Tennis Trader. I hope you're well. In this video, I'll be sharing with you my pre-tournament trading strategy. So this is a strategy that you can adopt before any tennis tournament begins. Now the general idea of it is that you can back a player before the tournament starts. Their price will shorten as they progress through the tournament and hence we can take profit along the way. But of course, it's not as black and white as this. You simply can't randomly select any player and expect to make profit from them as they glide through each round of the tournament. You need to have a clearly defined strategy with a risk managed approach. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. So no messing about, let's jump straight in. And the first thing you need to be clear on is your staking plan for this strategy. So I adopt a four point staking plan. So I'll only ever be risking a maximum of four points on this strategy. Now, if you want to know more about my banking strategies and risk management approach, then you can take my free introduction into tra tennis trading course. Now, essentially, my trading bank is made up into an overall of 100 points with a four points per match risk strategy. So with this strategy, we are adopting the same level of risk as we would do in a usual tennis trading match. Now, one of the reasons for this strict staking method is due to the fact that very often you may have a number of match risks happening at the same time. And of course, you don't want to run out of your bank to fund your trades due to the funds being tied up elsewhere. So before we move on to how we are going to attribute this four point stake, let's take a look at some pricing. So essentially for this strategy, I classify players into different risk categories, and this will enable us to evaluate the level of risk and therefore calculate the stake for each player that we are backing. So there are four categories. There's category one, which are low risk players. Category two, which are medium risk players. Category three, high risk. And category, category four, very high risk. Now, of course, much like when we are placing any other types of trades, the level of risk is directly proportionate to the opposing level of reward. So with low risk, you get low reward. With high risk, you get high reward. Now, of course, this level of risk is directly relative to probability. So low risk, low reward, higher probability. High risk, higher reward, lower probability. And so this is the criteria that I use to classify players for the purpose of this trading strategy. So for category one, these are players priced under 5.0. Category two, a player's priced between 5.01 and 10.0. Category three, a player's priced between 10.01 and 20.0. And then category four, which are our very high risk players. These are players priced above 20.01. So here is the staking plan for this strategy. Now, please remember, we are only risking an overall trade stake of four points. So this is how I attribute these four points. I'll place one point on a category one player. So this is a player priced under 5.0. I will then place another point on category two players. Now these will be split over one or two players, depending on other criteria. I will then split 1.5 points on category three players. Now this may be over two or three players. And then for the final half a point, I will place this half point on a category four player and actually split between two to four players. Now these are very high risk, but of course, if it pays off, they are high reward. Okay, so that is the staking plan for this pre-tournament trading strategy. But is it as simple as just merely looking at pricing? Well, my general rule here is that for category one and category two players, you don't really need to do that much research as the prices speak for themselves. However, these category one and two players only account for half of our overall risk. Now, when it comes to our category three and four players, then there is a bit more research to do. But of course, this does not need to be highly in-depth research. And thanks to the info I'm about to give you, this shouldn't take you too much time at all. So here is a checklist for you to go through when selecting your category three and four players. So first off, you should be looking at their recent form. So flashscores.com should always be your first go-to source when looking for players to check out their recent form. You should be looking at how they've performed over their last five to 10 matches. So are they on a winning or losing streak? What surface are they stronger on? And how does this relate to the surface in the tournament that you are trading? 
have a look at who their opponents were. So it's all well and good seeing player win seven out of their last 10 matches. But if these are players ranked in the hundreds, then you need to bear this in mind. It really is important who these opponents are from the player that you're looking to back. And of course, how much tennis have they been playing? If they've had a three month break due to injury, then they're probably best avoided. Secondly, always look at the draw. Now let's say you have found a player which looks to be overvalued and you think you could do very well back in this player, but then you find out they could potentially be placed against Djokovic in the second round. Well, in that case, you might want to reconsider. And this, of course, goes for first round matches as well. Now, if they're a real underdog in the first round, it's just best avoided because it's very unlikely that they will get through that first round. It does happen, but of course, you want to be sensible when choosing your players. And of course, you can use Google. So just simply Google the player you're considering backing. Now, take a look on Twitter feeds or any news stories that might pop up on a straightforward Google page. By doing this, you'll hopefully be able to get an idea of any chatter going on about the player. Now this is particularly important in regards to digging out any injury concerns. And there is nothing more frustrating than backing a player only for them to retire early on in the tournament. So okay, you have your players selected and you've backed them. And by the way, I'd suggest waiting until the night before the first round to place your back bets to allow for any last minute pullouts, changes, or any other news that might be going on. So, at what point do we start taking profits? Now again, this all depends on the category of the player that you are backing. So essentially, for the category one and two players, you are looking for them to progress further than your category three and four players. Now basically, there's no hard and fast rule for this, as there are literally just so many scenarios that can occur. However, there is some criteria that I stick to in order to ensure that this type of trade is controlled and our risk is managed. So the first thing that you want to have an idea of is the type of return that you want to achieve from each trade. So you should not be backing any player in the sheer hope that they win the tournament and then just let the trade run. This is a punt. We're not punters. We are traders. So for each player, you need to decide at what prices that you will start placing lay trades in order to lock in profits and reduce your liability. Now this is a case of balancing risk versus reward. So my trading approach is always much more on the risk averse side in the fact that I'd rather take smaller profits and reduce my downside rather than leave large amounts of money in the market in the hope that the trade will pay off. This is a surefire way to lose your money. Okay, so let's say for example that you've backed a player at the price of 8.0. So what price realistically would you want to start reducing your liability and locking in profits? Now of course, the rate at which the price will shorten will depend on a number of factors, such as how many rounds there are in the tournament, how convincingly they have won their previous matches, how other players have been performing, and particularly the draw, and of course, who they are playing in the next round. So let's say that this player's price has shortened to 3.5 from 8.0 after a couple of wins. Now you need to weigh up whether you want to start laying off the price to lock in profits or hold on for the next game. Now personally, with a price shortening from 8.0 to 3.5, I'd be looking to take some profits. And depending on who the player is playing in the next round, I would consider how much I want to take, how much, if any, I want to leave in the market. So as I said, there are just too many uh, variants to have a hard and fast rule of how much you should be laying off and at what prices. But my message is this, lay off prices gradually to gradually reduce your risk in the market, but weigh this up against the potential profit that you could make. Now a good rule of, of thumb is to lay off stakes of 25% as you reach certain prices. So if you place the back stake of say 100 pounds at the price of 8.0, Laying off 25% at the price of 3.5 would be reasonable. But again, there are just so many variants to consider and this changes from tournament to tournament. So you really need to take on board the big picture and consider everything that is going on. Now generally, I'll be laying off higher category players sooner and more often than the lower category players. Because if things go our way, we will get those bigger swings with these higher category players. Now another key element to this strategy where you can really make some big profits is looking out for overreaction in the market. 
Now this is when the price of the player that you are backing momentarily shortens beyond expectation and this is always worth looking out for. Now generally this will happen when the player you are backing is the underdog in a match but wins the first set. Now the market will overreact and his or her price will shorten even if they go on to lose the match. Now these first set wins are always worth keeping an eye out for and all you need to do when it happens is lay off at that lower price to either create a free bet or a green book so to speak or at the very least reduce your overall liability without impacting your potential profit that much. So it really is worth keeping an eye out on what is happening as the matches actually occur. Now the big thing is to always keep in mind when you're deciding whether to lay off some trades or to let them run is fear and greed. Now this is the major downfall of most traders. As I said, my approach is much more risk averse, which means I make consistent profits over the long term without incurring major losses. I don't trade the roller coaster style that many traders do. Sure, this may work for a while, but it is often short lived. Essentially, don't be greedy, and if you are fearful of losing the trade, then either you are trading above your means or your risk management strategy is not effective. Okay, so what about our category one players? How do we manage these types of trades? Well, let's take a look at Wimbledon 2022, which is just about to take place. Now, Djokovic is our category one player. So essentially, if we place a trade on him and leave it open until the end, we'll pretty much almost double our money. Now, of course, this is certainly not as good a return as we would get by backing other players, but this is Djokovic. Now, his price will shorten very gradually as the tournament progresses. So I'd be looking at laying off smaller amounts in the latter stages of the tournament, unless, and this is a big one, this is unless we see him struggle in some matches or if he happens to pick up an injury, which would see his price drift. Now remember, this is trading. Prices do go up and down and it won't always go in our favor. But if we have a clear strategy and an effective risk management strategy, then you increase the probability of profiting over the long term. Now, if you found this video useful, then please do check out my YouTube channel for loads more videos and subscribe to be notified of when I upload new videos. And if you'd like to become a successful tennis trader, then you can start your journey by enrolling on my free video course, An Introduction into Tennis Trading at protennistrader.com. And you can also grab a free copy of my ebook, Tennis Trading, The Ultimate Guide to Getting Started. I'll see you soon.